As the Korean War drew to a close in 1953, the world found itself at the dawn of a new conflict, the Cold War. This era, defined by the ideological struggle between the United States and the Soviet Union, brought a new urgency to military innovation. Both superpowers understood that technological supremacy, particularly in the skies, could tip the balance in their favor. Thus began an intense race to develop faster, more capable fighter jets. The first phase of this new era focused on breaking the sound barrier and achieving sustained supersonic flight. The US led the charge with the North American F-100 Super Sabre. Introduced in the mid-1950s, the F-100 became the first US fighter capable of exceeding the speed of sound in level flight. It marked a pivotal transition from subsonic to supersonic speeds, setting a new standard for fighter jets worldwide. The F-100, affectionately known as the Hun, was part of the Century series of fighter jets, aircraft designed to operate at supersonic speeds with advanced aerodynamics, including swept wings and powerful afterburning engines. However, early iterations of the F-100 faced significant challenges. Stability issues, especially at high speeds, led to several accidents, and modifications were required to improve its handling characteristics. Despite its initial setbacks, the F-100 Super Sabre found its niche in the Vietnam War, primarily in ground attack roles. It became the backbone of US tactical air power in the early stages of the conflict conducting close air support missions and low-level bombing runs. Its ability to deliver a significant payload while performing at high speeds made it a valuable asset in the challenging terrain of Vietnam. Meanwhile, the US was also developing fighters specifically designed for interception and air defense. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger and its successor, the F-106 Delta Dart, were among the first supersonic interceptors developed to counter the growing threat of Soviet long-range bombers. These aircraft were equipped with the latest radar systems and air-to-air -air missiles, allowing them to engage enemy aircraft from beyond visual range. The F-102 Delta Dagger introduced a radical new design, Delta Wings, which provided greater lift and stability at high speeds and altitudes. However, its operational ceiling and speed were limited compared to emerging threats. The F-106 Delta Dart addressed these issues, achieving speeds up to Mach 2.3 and incorporating more advanced avionics making it the most capable interceptor of its time. While the Delta series represented a significant leap in air defense, the US military also recognized the need for versatile fighters capable of multiple roles. This realization led to the development of the iconic McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, introduced in the early 1960s. Initially designed as a carrier-based interceptor for the U.S. Navy, the F-4 quickly proved its worth across all branches of the military due to its exceptional speed, range, and payload capacity. The F-4 Phantom II was a true multi-role fighter capable of conducting air-to-air -air combat, ground attack missions, and close air support. It was equipped with powerful radar and a variety of air-to-air -air missiles, including the AIM-7 Sparrow and AIM-9 Sidewinder. However, the aircraft's lack of an internal cannon initially proved to be a significant disadvantage in close-range dogfights during the Vietnam War. Early engagements in Vietnam revealed a critical flaw in the Phantom's design philosophy. Designed in an era that overestimated the effectiveness of early missile technology, the F-4 was built without an internal gun. This reliance on missiles alone became problematic in close-quarter dogfights, where missile reliability and engagement ranges were less favorable. 
the US Air Force quickly adapted by adding an external gun pod, and later the F-4E variant was equipped with an internal 20mm Vulcan cannon. The Vietnam War not only highlighted the strengths of the F-4 Phantom, but also underscored the evolving nature of air combat. It became clear that a successful fighter jet needed a balance of speed, maneuverability, and firepower, as well as versatility to perform a range of missions. These lessons would shape the future direction of US fighter design, paving the way for more specialized air superiority aircraft. While the F-4 Phantom dominated the skies over Vietnam, the US Air Force also experimented with a range of other fighter jets to fulfill specific roles. The McDonnell F-101 Voodoo, primarily designed as a long-range escort fighter and interceptor, saw limited combat service but played a vital role in testing new radar and missile technologies. The Republic F-105 Thunderchief, or THUD, was the largest single-engine fighter ever built, designed to deliver nuclear weapons deep into enemy territory. However, it found its true calling in Vietnam as a tactical bomber, where it was heavily used in the Rolling Thunder bombing campaign. The F-105's performance in Vietnam was a testament to its rugged design and capacity for carrying a significant ordnance load. However, its size and speed made it a target for increasingly sophisticated North Vietnamese air defences. Many F-105s were lost to ground fire and surface-to-air missiles, highlighting the growing challenge of operating in contested airspace. This prompted the US Air Force to rethink its approach to fighter design, emphasizing speed, agility, and survivability. During this period, the Soviet Union was also advancing its fighter technology. The introduction of the MiG-21, a highly maneuverable and fast aircraft, posed a new threat to US air superiority. The MiG-21, with its delta wings and powerful engines, was capable of speeds up to Mark II and was equipped with both cannons and missiles, making it a formidable opponent in dogfights. The subsequent MiG-23 featured variable sweep wings and even more powerful avionics, further challenging US dominance in the skies. In response to these new threats, the US shifted its focus toward developing a new generation of fighter jets that could establish and maintain air superiority against the latest Soviet designs. The lessons from Vietnam and the growing capabilities of Soviet aircraft convinced the US military of the need for dedicated air superiority fighters, leading to the development of two of the most iconic American jets ever built, the F-15 Eagle and the F-15. 16 Fighting Falcon. These next-generation fighters were designed with a new philosophy in mind. The F-15 Eagle, with its unmatched speed, thrust-to-weight ratio, and advanced radar systems, was built as a pure air superiority fighter. Not a pound for air-to-ground, as its developers would say. Meanwhile, the F-16 Fighting Falcon offered a different approach a lightweight, highly maneuverable multi-role fighter capable of both air-to-air -air combat and ground attack, combining agility with versatility.